Hey everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House. Now with warmer weather returning to the Midwest, now's the time to get back out and enjoy the weather. But living here in the Midwest, one of the biggest problems we have is the weather can change drastically day to day. Just this week, it was in the 50s and raining all week. Now this weekend, it's gonna be in the 90s. And yeah, I bought a one wheel. So for the longest time, I wanted to get a weather station for the house. Of course, my main requirement is that it has to connect into Home Assistant. So when I was at Costco last month, I saw this weather station by Lacrosse for $100. So the side of the box shows that it works with their app, Lacrosse View, and also takes data from AccuWeather. So I picked it up and I tried it out. Now today's video isn't really intended to be a full review of this particular product because there's a lot of them out there in this same genre and I didn't specifically pick this one up for any reason other than it was already at Costco. Now, one of the disappointing things about this particular version is that it doesn't allow for any external data collection natively. So the app they have is proprietary and it doesn't allow any data to be pulled out from it. And the AccuWeather integration is just pulling in forecast data. It doesn't really let you push any data out to another platform. But thanks to the awesome community, somebody wrote an integration with the Lacrosse View app that emulates the application and allows you to do API calls to pull data from the cloud down to your weather station. So this isn't a local only solution for this problem. You will still need to be connected to the internet both on your home assistant instance and the lacrosse device will need to be connected to Wi-Fi. But it does allow you to pull that data down in increments and display it in home assistant and then anywhere else you want. On today's episode, let's take a quick look at this specific weather station, what sensors it has on board, and then I'll show you how to retrieve that data and place it into home assistant. So let's get started. So again, this is one of their more basic weather stations. They have quite a few of them out on the market. The key is it has to be compatible with their view application because that is what we use to pull the data into Home Assistant. So like most of these things, this is not an official solution. Don't be surprised if it breaks and you have to update because there may be changes to the application that are not reflected in this API. So let's take a look at the actual weather station itself. Now it consists of three components the base station, the outdoor unit, and the rain sensor. On the base station, it's actually connected to AC power at all times. And this is something you're usually gonna set up in your kitchen or living room where you wanna be able to quickly review today's weather data. It can tell you the internal temperature, the internal humidity, and your barometric pressure. Now the main outdoor unit, this is where most of our external sensors are gonna live. As you can see on there, it's got an anemometer for wind speed. It's got a wind vane for wind direction. It also has external temperature and humidity. This will also output things like heat index or wind chill, which is just calculated based on the wind speed and the current temperature. Now finally is the rain sensor. This double dump bucket sensor will tell you your rainfall down to a tenth of an inch. The outdoor sensor and the rain sensor both wirelessly communicate back to the base station and the base station is connected to your network using Wi-Fi. Now the data coming from the sensors to your base station are pretty close to real time and the data upload to the cloud seems to be within about a second. And one problem I did run into is the Wi-Fi connection between the base station and my network had a lot of troubles. So I will post a link in the description to a help article from Lacrosse on how to connect to your Wi-Fi if you're running into problems. I end up basically having to put the base station in access point mode, connecting to it with my mobile phone, and then using that to connect it to my Wi-Fi. So now that we've seen the features of this weather station, let's head up to the office and I'll show you how to retrieve data and place it into Home Assistant. Now the first thing you wanna do is let's make sure the Lacrosse app is actually working for you. So as long as you open up the Lacrosse app and you've got all the data coming from your weather station information and you can see all of your additional sensors, then you're gonna go in the application. Again, as a reminder, this only works for the Lacrosse View app, none of the other Lacrosse apps. So now that we know we've got good data flowing into the cloud, let's talk about what's required on our Home Assistant instance. So first of all, you're gonna to need to be able to SSH into your Home Assistant to be able to run some code that we're gonna test. We also need to have Samba or SMB access to your device so you can take files and save them onto there. You could edit the code in SSH if you wanted to, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in Samba, just dropping up there. So making sure those are set up and ready to go. So first thing we need to do is let's make sure that we have the required folder on our Home Assistant instance. So here I've got Home Assistant pulled up, config, and then we need to add a new folder under the config directory called Python underscore scripts. If you already have one, that's fine. But if you don't already have one, you need to add it in there. So what we're gonna do is go to the GitHub repo. Um, this is by user Keith Prickett. What he's done is written a Python script that will allow it to retrieve data from the Lacrosse API and bring it down and display it locally. So I'm using his code and then I've got some 
additional code of my own that will process it, put it in MQTT and upload it into Home Assistant. So again, you're also gonna need to have an MQTT broker set up. This is pretty standard on most Home Assistant installs, but you need to have access to the MQTT broker and know the username and password. That way you can retrieve that data from the API and place it into MQTT so Home Assistant can retrieve that data and display it in your dashboard. So you'll need to go to code and download the zip file. Once that zip file is downloaded, go ahead and open it up. And in that folder, you'll see a lacrosse.py file. We're gonna try, take this lacrosse.py file and drop it into our Home Assistant slash config slash Python scripts directory. You don't need to directly open this file, we're just gonna reference the code in it. So now that we've got that placed in there, let's go ahead and hop over into your code editor of choice. I'm gonna be using Notepad++. All the code I'm gonna show you here is in the blog post that I've got linked in the description and here on screen. So make sure you go out and grab this code. You don't need to type it on the screen. That would be insane. So go ahead and copy the code that I show you on the blog post and paste it in the test it. So there's two pieces of code we're gonna be using today. One is just to test and verify that you can successfully connect into the lacrosse API and it will retrieve your devices that are associated with your account. That way we can use those device names in the second piece of code that will then parse all that data, retrieve all of the humidity and temperature data, and then display it in, and then place it into MQTT. You need to go to the blog post and grab this first bit of code under the testing and getting the list of devices. We'll grab that code and we're going to paste that into Notepad++. So you'll notice at the top, it's going to import that lacrosse.py file from that's in the same directory. So this needs to be in the same directory as the lacrosse.py file. And then we need to change the email and password. This is just the email and password that you're using in the lacrosse view app. Paste that into here, and then it will basically log into the app for you to pull your data. So once you put that in there, we'll go ahead and save it. And again, this code is just a test. It's gonna print out the list of devices. So then we're gonna pop into our SSH application. We're gonna to navigate to config slash Python scripts. So once you get this finished, let's go ahead and save it out into your Home Assistant instance slash config slash Python scripts. Make sure you change the save as type to Python and then give it a name, easy to remember, I call mine lacrosse test. So we'll save that, head over into our SSH application. Now in here, we're gonna go ahead and run Python 3 and then we're gonna run that lacrosse test.py. And again, this is gonna log in, retrieve the locations and then get your list of devices. So there we go, we've got, a, we've got a nice list of devices. This shows that we can successfully log in and grab data. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this information over and then I'll kind of walk you through the relevant parts. I've pasted this all into Notepad++ and made it bigger so you can read it. What this is doing is logging into your account and grabbing all of your sensors and grabbing their device IDs. It also lists the type of information that can be retrieved from each of your devices. So the first thing we're gonna to need to find is the sensor underscore type underscore name. And you'll see in my case, there are three of these. This is the name of the device that we're gonna need later on to basically tell it which type of device and what type of data to retrieve. So we've got three devices, the weather station display, which is the indoor unit in my case, the LTV-WSDTH04, that's the outdoor device, and then we have the RAIN 2.0 sensor. So there are sensor IDs behind each of these that we will, we will have our code automatically retrieve, but the only thing we need to retrieve from here are these three pieces of information. We'll go ahead and leave this pulled up, head back to the blog post, and grab the second bit of code called full code. So copy that, and again, paste this into your code editor. So I'm not gonna go through this code line by line. If you do have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or ask on our Discord server. If you run into problems, this works fine for me. I've tested it a couple different ways, but I'm gonna show you the relevant sections that we need to edit. Again, we've got your email and password from your lacrosse app. So go ahead and fill that in there. Then we've got your MQTT broker, IP address that goes there and then your MQTT username and password. Now I've got this topic of Home Assistant slash sensor, so it automatically adds it into the Home Assistant auto discover area, so it shows up automatically without having to go in and add additional sensors in YAML. And then the subtopic, you can customize this to whatever you want, but this is gonna add this at the beginning of your entity ID so you know it's coming from the lacrosse sensors. So we can scroll past this first section here that connects to your MQTT broker. This section down here is what parses the information and converts it, gets rid of any spaces, so we don't get any error messages, and then also converts everything into, if it does come across in degrees Celsius or kilometers per hour, it converts those into the Imperial version. If you wanna go ahead and keep degrees Celsius, you can go ahead and comment out this line, changes to degrees Celsius, and if you wanna keep kilometers per hour, comment out this line and changes to KPH. So we scroll down here to the bottom. These lines right here are what we need to care, what we care about editing right now. So as you'll notice, I've got weather station display here. This bit of code is gonna look for that name and then it will retrieve the temp, the ID and go ahead and grab all those sensors. So again, if we go back to, to here, I've got my indoor unit 
called Weather Station Display, and then I rename it to Display for short um, in the MQTT code, and we'll see here in a second how that shows up. Then I've got my outdoor unit. Again, if yours is different, a different ID, change that here, and then my Rain 2.0 sensor. Again, if you have, if you're not using a Rain sensor, then you can just ignore this line. Or if these happen to be different names for yours, go ahead and change them to the correct name from the device test that we did earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our code. We're gonna save it out to that same directory. Again, make sure you change it to Python scripts. And I call mine git underscore weather underscore station. So we'll go ahead and save that out there. And let's pop back into our terminal. Before we move on, we need to go ahead and install an additional Python script. So let's go ahead and run the code PIP3 install P-A-H-O dash M-Q-T-T. Now mine's gonna go ahead and say it's installed because it's already installed, obviously. But this will go ahead and install the PHO MQTT client, which is required for our code to programmatically access the MQTT broker and send data. So once we do that, let's go ahead and run Python 3, and it's the git underscore weather station dot pi. So we're gonna run that. That's gonna take a few seconds to go out and retrieve the data we need, and then it will display it inside of our MQTT broker. So let's go ahead and open up my MQTT Explorer, navigate to Home Assistant Sensor, if you scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see a bunch of sensors called lacrosse underscore something. Now, like I had shown you in the code before, which I'll bring the code up side by side, I rename each of the sensors to the relevant, to a shorter version of the name. So the lacrosse underscore, so anything with station is the outdoor unit. Anything with display is that weather station inside. And then of course the rain sensor is. So we open up each of these topics. We should see some relevant data and you can see the station temperature. So my outdoor temperature right now is saying 80.78 degrees. So if I bring up the lacrosse app, then right now it's showing me that it's 81 degrees outside. So it's rounding up the outdoor temperature. So it means that we're getting good data. Data is flowing from the API into our MQTT broker. And you can go through and explore all the additional sensors, the rain sensor, which is zero, because of course we haven't had any rain. And then my indoor temperature, which is a nice 73.94 degrees. So about 74 degrees inside. So we're getting all of our relevant data. And if you look here, you've got the unit, the proper units of measure added as we showed up before. So that means our code is working fine. So let's head over to Home Assistant and I'll show you how to run this script periodically, automatically in Home Assistant, and to go ahead and get this information into your dashboards. All right, so now we are in our Home Assistant. Let's make a quick change to our YAML to allow us to retrieve this data. So in my Home Assistant configuration.yaml, you wanna add a section called shell command, and then the name of the shell command is get weather station, colon, and then that code we ran, which this is the full path, Python 3, under, slash config, slash Python underscore scripts, slash git underscore weather underscore station dot pi. So one thing we want to make sure is if you already have the shell command, you just needed to define this below that. If you don't have a shell command in your configuration.yaml, then you can go ahead and copy this from the blog post and just paste it right into your configuration.yaml. So you can copy that, paste that into configuration.yaml, save it, go to settings, system, now in the latest versions of Home Assistant, they've actually moved this to the developer tools. So we'll go ahead and go to developer tools, click check configuration. Once that checks that it's clean, hit restart. What this is gonna let you do is use an automation to automatically run this at whatever interval you want. So once that configuration comes back, then we can go over to developer tools, services, shell command, and then get weather station. You call that shell command anytime you want, it's, then it's gonna execute that Python script in your Home Assistant instance and drop that data into MQTT. Now obviously, this is convenient because you can run it whenever you want, but we wanna do this automatically. So to do that, let's head over to settings, automations, and I've already created one called refresh lacrosse weather station data. This is just a simple automation. So it's just a time pattern. That time pattern is every three minutes, so in Home Assistant, if you don't know this, if you define three here, it's going to basically on every, so at 103, 203, it's gonna run it. If you put a slash three in here, it's gonna run it every three minutes. So you select a time pattern of every three minutes. We're gonna call the service shell command get weather station. And I will put this in the blog post because it is a very simple YAML code you can copy paste. So since we are actually publishing these topics directly to the Home Assistant sensors MQTT group, these don't come in as MQTT sensors, they just show up as sensors in Home Assistant. So one of the disadvantages of this method is you're not gonna be able to trace them back to the MQTT, open up and see them in the MQTT list because we're actually writing them directly to Home Assistant over the MQTT integration. So that sounds complicated, but what it does mean is that they'll just show up automatically in Home Assistant. So to see those variables, let's go to developer tools, states. So to find those sensors, they're gonna be showing up in three 
entity ID groups. It's going to be sensor dot station, sensor dot display, or sensor dot range because we, we're just naming them. So if you want to see all of the devices showing up from the display, we just go sensor dot display. So you'll see here we've got display temperature, humidity, heat index, and barometric pressure. So if you look at the temperature, you'll see we got a nice graph over the last few hours. One of the things on my graph you'll notice, this is the inside temperature, and you notice, my goodness, how did it get up to almost 87 degrees in your house in the middle of the night? Fortunately, it sits right on top of my dishwasher. So every time my dishwasher runs, it spikes the indoor temperature. So just be aware, if this is sitting next to something like a refrigerator or a dishwasher, when it runs, it could throw off the indoor temperature. Just FYI. But we'll see things like barometric pressure. That's going up and down because the weather's changing. We've actually got a weather front moving in. That's why it's a little bit high. Then if we change this to say sensors.station, we'll see the outdoor sensors. So we've got the outdoor feels like and heat index, the humidity outdoors, which you can see was very high yesterday and it's actually dropped quite a bit today. We've got the actual temperature of the outdoor station. We've got the wind heading. This is in 360 degrees. So you'll need to translate this into the from the direction into an actual bearing if you wanted it like northwest southwest that sort of thing i'll show you a card here to that does that automatically and then we have wind speed which of course wind speed i need to put in a round function in here it's so we've got the wind speed which can vary obviously quite a bit from zero to whatever and then finally we've got the rain sensor and that's the one up here so we had a little tiny bit of rain yesterday now we have all the data in home system that we need we can do with it whatever you want but real quickly, I'll show you my dashboard that I've added this data to. So I've got the temperatures, the outdoor temperature and humidity in a nice graphing card. You'll notice I've got this special card here, which is a card you can install with hacks that shows the wind information, the speed and heading, and also translates that into your, your compass heading. And then I have all of my information just listed out in a, in a couple of cards here. So if we go to edit these cards, I'll show you what they are. Now I'm using the mini graph card. For these, I like the way it charts out the graph over a 24 hour bit of information for both humidity and temperature. This is the co custom card called compass card, which allows me to put in the indic indicator sensor for the heading and then the value sensor for the speed. And that's what automatically converts that over to the compass direction and places it in this nice compact card. Now these are both available in hacks. And again, I got links in the blog post to these two cards. But if you go into hacks, front end. Obviously mine are already installed, so I want to look for the compass card and then also the mini graph card. So again, links to the repositories are in the code and the description. So you add those two cards in there and you get this nice weather display where you can show your wind information and your humidity and those sort of things. So, all right, there you are. That was a little tour of the code that I wrote to pull the data from lacrosse. Thank you again to Keith Prickett for creating the initial code to allow us to display this or pull this information out of lacrosse. Again, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server at the URL here. Thank you again for watching this far in the video. If this was helpful to you, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see some of my other home assistant projects, click on the playlist here. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to our channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, I'll see you in a future video.